We will charge you with murder. We are coming for you. Run. With this message, the United States is sending a strong warning to the Mexican cartels. For decades, the northern country has suffered the serious consequences of this terrible evil that claims thousands of lives every year. Drug trafficking seems to be growing by leaps and bounds and is spreading rapidly throughout the continent. The expansion of the territories controlled by drug traffickers unleashes clashes, both between rival gangs and with security forces, turning cities into real battlefields. Despite the efforts of the DEA, strict border controls and collaborations between Mexico and the United States, large criminal organizations continue to advance. The illegal opioid trade is one of the most lucrative businesses on the planet, and criminal groups are willing to do anything to protect their precious territories, even if this requires using all the power of their arsenal. Terrible armed wars, kidnappings, extortions and massacres in broad daylight, they have turned the drug business into a serious state problem and Washington into its number one enemy. Donald Trump, in the midst of a dispute for his candidacy, has supported the campaign with new proposals to confront the Aztec monster. Some of his radical ideas have raised concerns in the international community about the risk of deteriorating relations with its southern neighbor. Of course, if the proposals go ahead, Mexico would not sit idly by. Now, don't get up from your seat because in this report, we will tell you what the terrible plan of the United States to exterminate Mexican drug traffickers consists of. Let's begin. The presence of drug trafficking throughout Mexico has caused great havoc. Substance use, brutal armed confrontations, kidnappings and murders in broad daylight have turned quiet cities into places where horror and chaos now reign. Since taking office in December 2018, President López Obrador has implemented a change of focus in the fight against drugs as it had been under previous governments. Under the slogan, Hugs Not Bullets, he has proposed to confront this dramatic conflict by moving away from the armed response and concentrating on social programs to attack the roots of criminality instead of confronting criminals. These measures have generated strong criticism from the opposition and society in general, who argue that the president seems not to recognize the seriousness of drug violence in various populations. The United States, the main recipient of narcotics from Mexico, has repeatedly asked the neighboring government to redouble its efforts to control criminal groups. In 2023, at the start of his presidential campaign, Donald Trump made a commitment to address this problem. Fentanyl, heroin, meth, and other lethal drugs are pouring across our wide open border, stealing hundreds of thousands of beautiful American lives. And it's happening like never before in our history. Donald Trump's warning resonates with the statistics on overdose deaths in the United States. The numbers indicate that in the last two decades, the number of deaths in the country caused by overdoses of synthetic drugs has been increasing rapidly. Despite the extensive efforts that different governments have deployed throughout the national territory in this time, the problem has continued to grow, even worsening with the appearance of new highly lethal drugs, such as fentanyl. Con esta droga de fentanyl y con la metanfetamina lo están distribuyendo a todas partes. Y es demasiado adictivo y ellos están creando la demanda para esta droga. This new substance comes from Mexico, where it is manufactured and sold across the border. In the Aztec country, the commercialization of fentanyl is not completely prohibited, since it is commonly used for medical treatments. This, added to its potent effect, its low production cost and the possibility of being manufactured entirely in laboratories, has led the cartels to turn completely to its commercialization. Currently, it has not only infected the streets of North American cities, but also those of Mexico. 
According to immigration controls on the border with the United States with the pandemic, confiscations of fentanyl packages destined for the northern country have intensified. Marcaje positivo. Estos aseguramientos son son muy frecuentes. Actualmente el, se realizan de dos a tres operativos por semana y en la mayoría de las ocasiones son positivos. Al principio tal vez se preocupaban más por esconderlo. Ahora lo meten en una mochila tan evidente. O sea, ya no se preocupan por tal vez esconderlo. Les preocupa más mandar volumen para asegurar que más paquetes lleguen a destino. Between 2016 and 2021, drug-related deaths in the United States more than tripled, peaking in 2022 with some 83,000 overdose deaths. Faced with this problem, one of Trump's campaign promises for the elections that will take place in November 2024 is to declare war on the Mexican cartels. If he were to win his candidacy, the former president plans to send special forces from his country to Mexico to eradicate these criminal groups once and for all. In 2017, Mark Esper, the former Secretary of Defense, had revealed controversial information in his memoirs about the proposal that Trump had made during his government. It consisted of attacking drug laboratories in Mexico with missiles and thus ending the criminal structure of the cartels. In the book, he analyzes the management of the Republican leader, denouncing many of the irregularities of his government, including that Trump was willing to keep secret the United States' participation in the attack against its southern neighbors. The president pulls me aside on at least a couple occasions and suggests that maybe we have the U.S. military shoot missiles into Mexico. Shoot missiles into Mexico for what? He would say to, to go after the cartels. And we would have this private discussion where I'd say, Mr. President, I, you know, I, I understand the motive because he was very serious about dealing with drugs in America. I get that. We, we all understand. But I'd explain to him, we, we can't do that. It would violate international law. It would be terrible for our neighbors to the south. It would. At the time, no one imagined that the controversial confessions that the former U.S. Secretary of Defense made in his book would become a real initiative, much less one of the strongest campaign proposals of the current Trump candidacy. The United States' tendency to quickly militarize conflicts and consider the use of this force when faced with a foreign policy problem is well known. As Esper had announced years before in the book, the anti-drug deployment that Trump intends to lead would not be officially communicated through government channels, nor would he expect to have the consent of the Mexican state to act. At that time, the information that Esper revealed was presented in such an irrational way that he was pushed to make statements about it. Did President Trump really say no one would know it was us? Yes. Yes, I, 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 he said that, and I, I just thought it was fanciful, right? Because of course it would be us. I was reluctant to tell this story because I think, I, I thought people won't believe this, that they'll think I'm just making it up and folks in, in, in Trump's orbit will, will dispute it. And then I was having dinner after the election in 2020 with a fellow cabinet member. And, and he said to me, he goes, you know, remember that time when President Trump suggested you shoot mes missiles into Mexico? And I said to him, you, you heard that? He goes, oh yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe how, how well you managed and talked him down from that. And at that moment, I knew I got to write the story because I at least have one witness who will verify that this really did happen. Various media outlets that have analyzed Trump's campaign proposal confirm that the candidate is convinced that the American army has the weapons and men necessary to annihilate the cartels. Apparently, the action on Mexico could be similar to what the United States implemented in 2019 when they killed the leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, an intervention with military forces justified in order to end terrorism. This controversial initiative, which at the time generated criticism on social media, has raised concerns after Trump's campaign statements. If it comes to fruition, the United States' war on drugs would be a true cold-blooded battle. Of course, the president of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador, did not remain silent and responded forcefully. Nosotros no vamos a permitir que intervenga 
ningún gobierno extranjero y mucho menos que intervengan fuerzas armadas de un gobierno extranjero en nuestro territorio. In a conference held at the beginning of 2023, the Mexican president openly rejected the initiative and pointed out that the proposal promoted by the Republicans would be a form of interventionism on the territory of his country and a political propaganda strategy in view of the 2024 elections. Once again, the former president of the United States managed to ignite the flames of provocation as he has known how to do during the years of his government. In his proposal, the first step would be to label drug trafficking groups as terrorists and as a great threat to the security of the state. In this way, the entry and attack on Aztec territory would be justified in the face of the numerous restrictions and criticisms that it could face from the United Nations Organization, which imposes a series of protocols for the mediation and resolution of bilateral conflicts. Although the initiative would focus on attacking drug trafficking bases, the military intervention raises suspicion about the true motivations of the plan and the effective scope it could have in the territory. Also, some of the sources reported that Trump had hinted that the United States should create a blacklist with the most important names in drug trafficking in the region, and that a special operations team should be in charge of killing or capturing them one by one. These lists already have international fame, as they have been implemented in other regions where the Americans have been militarily involved, for example during the war on terror in Iraq. This suggests that the strategies could be similar in Mexico, missile launches and a large deployment of the army in key points of the Aztec territory. The implementation of these measures could lead to a disaster. Considering that the drug groups reside in large urbanized cities, this could result in the destruction of thousands of homes and the loss of many lives. On the other hand, the attack would leave without essential supplies and would interrupt the access routes of numerous groups. In line with this, and to add evidence that Trump is serious about his initiative, on his campaign website he stated that if he wins the elections and governs for a second term, He will end the cartels just as he did with ISIS, considering this mission an official policy of the state and acting accordingly. Finally, as I have said before, I will ask Congress to pass legislation ensuring that drug smugglers and human traffickers receive the death penalty. As we have mentioned, if this plan is executed, Trump would order the Department of Defense, in addition to deploying special forces, to take other drastic actions, such as launching missiles to inflict maximum possible damage on the leadership, infrastructure, and operations of the cartels. If this were the case, many cities would face explosive attacks that would cause great destruction and the death of innocent civilians. Not to mention that the drug power would offer resistance by attacking with its best weapons. In short, Trump's proposal would be to deepen and increase some of the policies already implemented during his previous term, pointing to the administration of the current president Joe Biden as responsible for the increase in deaths from fentanyl consumption due to its irregular handling of the southern border. Since the end of the Trump administration, the drug cartels have seen their revenue skyrocket by an astounding, listen to this one, you business people. You think you're good at business? You're nothing compared to these people. 2,500%. Would you say that's good? If that were stock on the New York Stock Exchange, it would be the hottest stock of the decade. The choice this election is simple. Democrats will defund the police. Republicans will defund the cartels, and that's what happens. Many members of the Republican Party support this initiative and have come out not only to support it, but also to expand it with bills that continue the militaristic line. Louisiana Republican Senator John Neely Kennedy did not hesitate to raise his voice and confront members of Biden's party, accusing them of inaction. His remarks caused great displeasure due to their racist content. Our economy is $23 trillion. Mexico's economy is $1.3 trillion. Ours is 18 times bigger. We buy $400 billion every year from Mexico. Without the people of America, 
Mexico, figuratively speaking, would be eating cat food out of a can and living in a tent behind an outback. We have all witnessed how ruthless Donald Trump can be with those who stand in his way, and the extreme level that some of his policies known for promoting the expulsion of minorities, racist ideas, and violence can reach. The synthesis of this position has been reflected in a controversial bill presented to the U.S. House of Representatives in 2023 by Congressman Dan Crenshaw and Mike Waltz, two members of the Republican Party. In it, both officials introduced the AUFM Resolution, an authorization for the use of military force in the conflict with Mexican cartels. This bill would give the president the power to attack those nations, organizations, or foreign persons that he himself considers responsible for drug-related crimes or that have used violence to control territory for illicit purposes. Due to its imprecise nature and the concentration of power over the use of force in a single person, the proposal is presented as controversial and highly dangerous. If passed, it would legitimize not only the execution of missile attacks on cartels, but also a possible invasion and occupation of Mexico, if the president so chose. In other words, the approval of this law could be interpreted as a formal declaration of war, with all that implies. The closest and most worrying precedent to this legislation is the 2002 authorization by the United States Congress to use force in Iraq, whose approval with theoretically similar objectives ended up becoming the legal basis for a disastrous war. Prominent representatives of the country's political life have actively supported the bill and the use of force it envisages, among them Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who also expanded the proposal by promising to include more actions if necessary, ranging from the naval blockade of Mexican ports to the death penalty. We are going to authorize the use of deadly force against the cartels. If you have somebody coming in with the fentanyl on their in the backpack, if they're doing that, uh, that's the last thing they, they're going to be able to do because we're going to leave them stone cold dead at the border. We're not putting up with it anymore. While Trump's proposed initiative would be the most extreme and reckless, there are also other alternatives that align with it. For example, the bill presented in May 2024 by the House Foreign Affairs Committee requires that fentanyl be included in the Chemical Weapons Convention. Although the approval of this project would be unlikely due to the legal implications of considering this substance a weapon, it is presented as a highly dangerous proposal. This would imply that Mexican cartels would be using toxic chemicals against American citizens, which could justify the intervention of military forces in the neighboring country under the pretext of a legal response. Another similar proposal has been presented by a large group of state prosecutors who ask the current president, Joe Biden, to declare fentanyl a weapon of mass destruction. The senders of the letter claim that the main objective is to counteract the impact of this drug and frame the substance as a threat to national security. Finally, and in line with the above, the Republican senator for South Carolina introduced to the Senate the law that seeks to designate nine Mexican cartels as foreign terrorist organizations known as TTOs. This term is the strongest tool that the U.S. government has to indicate that an organization is acting in a corrupt manner. This designation would allow, in addition to repressive actions against criminal groups, a series of additional consequences. These include financial sanctions and the application of the criminal charge to those who materially support these groups, which includes the supply of goods and services. This could generate access problems for Mexican civilians who live in areas controlled by drug groups and receive help from civil society organizations and other service providers. In general terms, all the initiatives present the same problems, the concentration of power by the president and the lack of justification within the framework of the law to attack Mexico. These, among other aspects, make it unlikely that their approval will be effective. If the U.S. were to go ahead, first of all, any U.S. intervention would probably have to be carried out without Mexico's cooperation. This would mean that they would be illegal under international law, and that, Without Mexico's support, the lack of coordination would make their success very difficult. 
Unilateral action by the United States could hinder anti-drug cooperation with the southern neighbor and joint work in managing migratory movements and would also be contrary to the paradigm of shared responsibility, the main axis that guides diplomatic actions against drug trafficking between the two countries. Mexico could also respond economically by disrupting supply chains to the United States which has become increasingly dependent on Mexican manufacturing as well as on the energy investments it has in this territory. In light of the present, it is evident that the military actions that Mexico and the United States have taken in the past did not solve the problem, but rather deepened it dividing criminal organizations into smaller groups that settled in areas less controlled by the government. In the last 15 years, the number of cartels has doubled, and the homicide rate has increased between 2006 and 2022, while the flow of drugs to the United States has not decreased. According to the arguments of associations such as the international organization Grupo Crisis, it will be inevitable for the Mexican state to continue using force to control drug crime, but it must do so strategically. In addition, criminal networks need to be prosecuted, and the conditions that make it easier for drug traffickers to recruit people changed, offering educational and employment alternatives, especially for vulnerable young people, who are more exposed to falling into these networks. Support from the United States would be very useful and even necessary in the implementation of these measures. To this end, American politicians should focus on strengthening harm reduction services rather than threatening war. While this path could be understood as appropriate, the result of the elections and the possibility of Trump returning to power will ultimately define its course. We have to take over, we have to be tough, we have to be smart, we have to be fair. But if we don't do something immediately, our country is gone. Resolving the differences between the two countries will be crucial, not only to continue advancing in the fight against drug trafficking, but also to prevent the conflict from becoming an even more terrible one, plunging the region into a spiral of chaos and destruction. Whether the path is one of force or intelligence, at this point does not seem to be the core of the problem but rather abandoning unilateral positions and designing a cooperation strategy in accordance with the complex current circumstances. Perhaps this joint work will one day allow the region to recover peace. That's all. We have reached the end of this report, but you can continue watching more content like this on our channel. Until next time.